permission from the bishop to be seated tonight while I share with you. Please forgive my voice. Because I don't want you to think, oh, it's another preaching. I want to appeal to your, you know, to you psychologically. So you know that it's a family meeting. So you know that it's a relaxed atmosphere. We want to talk about issues from the word of God that pertain to life and godliness. And tonight, I want to share with you from my walk with God and the privilege of being married for about 38 years with, thank you, and still counting, with many children, biological, natural, spiritual, adopted, and destiny children. And nine grandchildren. And still counting. So I'm speaking to you tonight via the anointing and via experience. And I want you to listen very carefully. Marriage is about destiny. There are five major things that are important in the life of anybody. Number one is God. God did not create a world in which he will not be needed. Number two is you. You are the most important person in your life. Every other relationship is secondary. You are the most important human being in your life. If you hurt, you will hurt others. If you are an incomplete person, you will not make a complete marriage. If you don't like yourself and you don't love yourself, you're going to transfer aggression to whoever makes the mistake of marrying you. So you are very important. Self-care is important. It's very important for you to take a good care of yourself as a single person, as a married person. As a Christian, as a worker in the church, it's important for you to pay attention to you because you are the most important person. I said there are five major things that are the most important in life. You fail in these five things, you are truly a colossal failure. You succeed in them, you are truly a massive success. Number one is God. Your relationship with him must be dynamic and it must be cultivated. A dynamic Christian work is not a gift. You cultivate it. Number two is you. You're the most important human being in your life. Every other person is secondary. A lot of people don't get this right. They just go into marriage and they get the rudest shock of their lives. Number three is your family or marriage. And we'll be talking about that tonight. Number four is your career. What feeds you? You are a designer, be the designer. You are a lawyer, be the lawyer. Whatever you do, it's important to be committed. And number five is relationships. Your network is your net worth. Who you are connected to and with will determine your net worth, your weight, your value. 
If you look at how I have arranged those things, the family or marriage is in the middle. Two up, two down. In the middle. That presupposes that it is a most important item on that list. Genesis 2.18, God the Almighty said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So God believes that marriage or family life should enhance your destiny. Marriage is many things to many people. To some people, it is a necessary evil. To some people, it's just an organized forum for child bearing and child rearing. For some people, it is a contract. Some men need someone that can do house chores. That can keep the house clean and satisfy their sexual desires. And then they pay a stipend at the end of the month to the person. Marriage is more than all that. Listen to me, beloved. Marriage is a covenant relationship. Not a contract. It's more than a contract. Marriage is a covenant. A Jew will understand what I just said. Genesis 15, Genesis 17. The covenant is explained there. When you want to cut a covenant, it involves two parties or two people. One of them must be stronger than the other. Two cities, two towns. You are a farmer. I'm a hunter. So let's cut a covenant. Meaning, where you are weak, I am strong. Where I am strong, you are weak. We'll come together. So in those days when you want to cut a covenant, certain things characterize the covenant. Number one, the two parties. Number two, you choose a date. Number three, you choose a place. Number four, you invite people as witnesses. And number five, you get animals ready. Remember when God was going to take his relationship with Abraham to the next level, the level of covenant. He told him to bring animals. And so you see in Genesis chapter 15, when you want to cut that covenant and people have come as witnesses to that particular place, you cut the animals and you Put them opposite each other. You cut them into two halves. One here, one here. Blood everywhere. And then the two of you, you take off. I take off from there, you take off from here. And we walk in between the animals that have been caught. We meet in the middle and we exchange our vows. It's there in Genesis 15. When God was going to cut a covenant with Abraham. When you get to the middle, you say something like this. From this day, I cut a covenant with you. What you have becomes mine. What I have becomes yours. You rise to defend me when necessary and when needed. And I rise to defend you when necessary and when needed. Then you remove your jacket or your garment. You give it to the person. And the person removes his or hers and hands it over to you. Remember, blood is involved. Witnesses are there. There is a place and there is a date. And there is exchange. When you want to get married, this is the pictorial image of what takes place. Two people. You pick a date. You pick a place. You invite witnesses. And you say something like this. From today, I give you my words. With my worldly goods, I deal worship. 
I forsake every other person and I cling to you. A lot of people do not take their marriage vows serious because they don't understand that marriage is a covenant. Witnesses, you will notice that most of the time when the man of God says, who giveth this woman to be married to this man? And the bride's father comes out, takes the bride's hand. Usually, the bride's father hands over the lady's hand to the man of God, not to the groom. Can't he see? Doesn't he know? It's prophetic and symbolic. The father is saying, I have taken care of this girl for 30 something years, for 20 something years. Now I give her back to you, God, through your servant. Give her to whosoever you want. It's a serious thing. A wedding ceremony is a one day affair or a weekend affair. A marriage is a lifetime event. A lot of people spend time preparing for the one day event, but they don't prepare for the lifetime event. That's why it's important for you to prepare. To prepare. If you are single here, I'm going to share a few things with you in the confines of the time that I have. If you're married, I'm coming to share a few things with you. But let me just quickly mention this to some of you that are in very peculiar situations. You are a widow or you are a widower. Don't think that you are the chiefest of sinners. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Don't kill yourself with tears. Don't think it is over for you. God has a way of redeeming the time for us. Repackage your life. Rebrand your life. And if you want to remarry, it is allowed biblically. If you feel like crying, cry, because you are going to go through seven major stages of faces as a widow. Or you're here, divorced, or separated. You are a single parent. I'm speaking to you. Life has thrown challenges at you. Don't sit down there and be singing by the rivers of Babylon. Pick up the pieces of your life. Rebrand. And trust God for a greater day. Oh, your husband has been involved in adultery. You're also going to go through five stages like these people. I don't have the time to break these five stages. But let me just mention them in person. You're going to go, whether you are divorced, whether you are separated, whether you're a widow, whether you're dealing with adultery, you're going to go through phase one, shock. Phase two, denial. Phase three, grief. Phase four, healing. And phase five, restoration. Don't stay in the third stage forever, grieving and grieving and grieving. Move on. When the Lord turns again, the captivity of Zion will I then capture him. I needed to chip in those words for those of you that are in peculiar situations. A single parent, you're not married, you had kids when you were in school, forgive yourself and stop defining yourself by that mistake. God is coming big for you. Those of you that are single, please take note of the following things. According to Genesis chapter 24, where we have the prototype for marriage, beginning from verse number one, the last verse, which is maybe 60, verse 67 or something, we see different things from that scripture. And the first thing I want to say to you that those of you that are single, please listen very carefully. Marry from your tribe. I 
I expected this response because you think I'm speaking about Ghana, Accra, Nigeria. That's not what I'm talking about. Marry from your tribe. Genesis chapter 24. And Abraham was old and well stricken in years. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham called his, the servant of his house and said, Go to my tribe and go get a wife for my son. You cannot be a born again child of God and be dating a Muslim. And tell me that you are going to convert him. You're joking. When he, after we were married, he's going to change. Listen to the next thing I'm about to say. Marriage does not change people. Marriage amplifies who people are. Marriage is like money. It's not good, it's not bad. Money is not good, money is not bad. Money takes on the character of the owner. If you're a bad person and you have money, you will be baddest. That's what we call money misrode. You'll be very unkind, you'll be wicked because money is an amplifier. If you're a kind person and you have access to money, you're going to be very kind. It's the same thing with marriage. People hardly change. It is what is on their inside that marriage amplifies. Even when we talk about you marrying a Christian, let me break it down for you. Marry from your tribe. The nation of Israel, one nation, but 12 tribes. While you are befriending the person, settle the matter of religion. Religion in Greek is religionem, which means to bind fast together. Religion plays a crucial role in marriage. Discuss. This man is a Christian, but he doesn't believe in tithing. You're going to have problems after marriage. He's not from your tribe. This lady is a born again Christian, but she must always tie pneumonia's calf. Coco sack garments. <laughs> you have tried to change her. It's so bad that by the time you get married to her, while you are making love to her, she'll be saying, My scarf, oh my scarf, my scarf, where is my scarf? <laughs> Don't push nothing under the carpet in the name of let's get married. Love is blind, but marriage is the eye opener. Marriage is the eye opener. Shine your eyes very well. Close one eye in prayer. Open the other one in watching. Look very well. Mm. I know what I'm talking about. Nothing is wrong with the other tribes. You don't cover your head, you cover your head. You don't wear jeans, you wear jeans. You don't wear makeup, you wear makeup. One nation, we're all born again, going to heaven. But different tribes. That is the reason, I think, that is the reason why the cross has four entrances. Come with scarf, come without scarf. Come with makeup, don't come with makeup. Just come to the cross. that tiny, tiny matters will not become big matters after marriage. Settle it. Just come to the cross. Where do you want to worship? 
Do you believe in mentoring? Do you believe in a prophet? Do you believe in Sunday school? Do you believe in serving the Lord? Or you just want to be a Sunday Sunday believer? Settle everything. Listen to me, beloved. As a single lady, 14 brothers proposed marriage to me. My husband was the 14th man. And I'm talking about believers, tongue-talking believers. The devil almost confused me. I was the most active sister in the church. So everybody wanted a Jim Jim sister. It's not about beauty. I wasn't wearing jewelry. I wasn't wearing makeup. They saw something that they wanted. And the devil knew that I had a purpose and a destiny. I remember one of them came one day and said, Sister Funke, pray. I said, what is it? So just say hallelujah first. Pray, 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 pray. I said, okay, hallelujah. He said, before I left the house, I told the Lord that if you are truly my wife, I should meet you in the kitchen preparing. I'm allowed. My husband calls him for one night. Our father who art in heaven, not just my father. Don't let anybody confuse you. Somebody carries one big Dex Bible or one big iPad. I say, don't share the Lord. Woe betide you if you don't marry me. Tell him to get lost. Marry from your tribe. I cannot say this too much. Marry from your tribe. Time will tell. There will be issues you don't need to deal with if you marry from your tribe. How do I know that God is speaking to me? How does he speak to you in, on other matters? Don't start knowing how God speaks when it's time to choose. How does he speak to you? You wanted to drop 200 CDs in church and you had a voice and intuition. You say, something told me to drop 500. That cannot be the devil. The devil will never tell you to increase your offering. He's a taker. You wanted to overtake. And it occurred to you. Don't go yet. You're looking for your wristwatch or your earring. So train your spirit to listen to God, to hear God, on little, little matters. When it comes to the choice of a life partner, God will not boomerang from heaven. You will be confused if he does. Marry from your tribe. Number two. Don't marry a lone ranger. People cry in the palace too. It is a reality. The rich also cry. It's not everything that glitters that is gold. I mentor the very, 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 very high. And I mentor the very, very low. The rich also cry. They sneak to my hotel room in different countries of the world. I cry with them. I weep with them. If you know some of their stories, when the siren is blowing, you will never pray, oh God, let me be like them. You will stop praying that prayer. You'll be thanking God for that loaf of bread in your house. Don't marry a lone ranger. Don't marry someone that says, me, I don't fear nobody. It's a danger on two legs. If there is nobody in your life that you are accountable to, you are prone to accident. Your mentor or whoever gives you the covering, the person you fear, I'm not speaking about Tormenting fear. I'm talking about reverence. Some that say, oh, I don't, ah, he must not hear. No, please, please, I don't want. Your wife should have someone 
that she can report you to. And you say, no, let me prostrate, please. Any car that has no brake system is prone to accidents. That is life. Don't marry a lone ranger. Someone that doesn't fear nobody. Someone that talks to anybody and about anybody. Because very soon, you will look like what you look at. You too, you will find yourself attacking grace. Abusing your parents. Misbehaving. Don't tell me you are very humble until certain things are in your life. E.g. Power. Money. Position. These things are in your life and you can still genuflex or kneel down or prostrate or bow to greet the people you always do that for. Then I can say you are humble. See, so there's one man in our church. That man is very humble. Even though he's poor, what else will he be? <laughs> Don't trust yourself. Until you, are, you, you have change in your pockets. There are people that even the almighty God tiptoes around them. There are people that if God makes the mistake of lifting them, God will lose them. Even when they are praying, oh God, I just want to. God is asking the archangel, what did he just say? <laughs> what did he say? Because he traveled to Cameroon. <laughs> Don't marry a lone ranger. Marriage is fantastic. Marriage is good depending on the cutlery you use to eat it. But marriage is hard work. You need in your life a confronter. Even though you need in your life a comforter. The next thing I'd like to say, I'm still in Genesis 24. Don't marry a lazy person. Laziness is a sickness. And it is infectious. Laziness is sin. Don't marry a lazy person. When I speak about laziness, it's not just physical, even though I will still talk about physical. Mental laziness. Don't marry someone that cannot think. He can pray, but he cannot think you will have problems. A lot of people waste their time praying over some matters when God has blessed each and every one of us between 10 and 14 billion cells in our brain. Your brain is not only for weak. It's to think. Let me say this to you. I'm a very practical preacher. When I met my husband, I was not a graduate. I hadn't gone to the university. We got, so, he was in the university. Nobody told me anything. I just said to myself, like Naomi, called herself to a roundtable conference. I said to myself, Olufuke, if you are not careful, a time will come when you will no longer fit this man. You won't fit the, the front of his Range Rover. You better improve on yourself because my husband had become a pastor. The church was exploding. Governors were coming to submit to him. Governors were coming with the entourage to worship in church. Some of the church members were becoming commissioners. 
got these and that, governor, I said to myself, as God is lifting this man, I better lift myself. So I went back to school. After four children. And I still led the class. You should clap for me if you are not jealous. Thank you. Now, the world has even become a global village. Go back to school if you need to go back to school. In fact, first degree is becoming useless now. You see small, small children, 19, 21, first degree. I'm online, self-improving every day. One day my husband saw me, 4 a.m., I was still studying. He said, ah, they need to give you a PhD, studying. Bishop, some years ago I said to God, I want my mate to be scarce. I don't want to carry the normal, regular anointing. Pastor's wife. After my husband told me, don't die under my shadow, darling. I don't want to be an African husband. Get your honor. When I announce in church that you are going to preach, people should be excited. Who? 2 a.m. I will be in the toilet studying the book of Ephesians. Father, show me the mystery behind this. How can my life be better? I want my mates to be scarce. I don't want to die as a woman. I want to die as an institution. That after I'm dead, they will still be understudying me. And that's what I'm striving to do. Marriage should not be the end of your life. Hey, if I can just get married, oh, hey, I'll be having sex. Yeah. Yeah. Are there no women that got married? And their love for God died? Is this children? Before I cook? Before I, really? Mental laziness is a sickness. Be a strategic thinker. As a man, as a woman. As a man thinketh, so is he. Think. My husband says, what you are gifted for is superior to what you are trained for. Think and bring out treasures. By God's grace, I have written and published 106 books. 106. Thank you. My books are on Amazon. And every month, Amazon pays me. Pays me in dollars. Pays me in pounds sterling. Amazon pays me. Some of you, the giants on your inside are sleeping. Write that book. How to be a caterer. It will sell. People don't read big, big books anymore. So you are even fortunate. Small, small books. <laughs> Mathematics made easy. How to be a great husband. Fatherhood simplified. There are countries I've not been, and I've been to quite a few. The countries have not been that my books are. Bottle your genius. God uses those books to feed me, to bless me. Think. 
as a single person, as a married person, be a thinker. Let me shock you. Nobody becomes wealthy by salary. There's no miracle, there's no prayer, there's no vigil that can make you wealthy. Every wealthy person, look at their lives. They have what you call multiple sources of income. MSI. Some of you singles, you are waiting for marriage. Waiting and waiting for marriage. Hear me. Enjoy where you are on your way to where you are going. Gone are the days when you say, ah, don't buy anything. Oh, no man will marry you. The men of these days, they are looking for girls that have cars. Girls that have properties. The man will take the car from you. Drive it as if it is his own. Drop you off at work. So stop putting your life on hold because you are waiting for marriage. Invest. Do something. If you print your statement, some of it is only when you want to go to the bank, to the embassy. And you print your statement, you say, where did this money go? Jesus, how? What did I do with this money? Do you know how much passes through your hand? Money grows. Anytime you are asking God for more, God bless me, give me more. God asks you for structure. The one I gave you last year, what did you do with it? Some of you are wearing as wig, as gold, as outfits, the cement you should have bought to build a house. Some of you are driving as cars, the houses you should have built. Let me shock you. The Bible says, a righteous man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. How do I know you are righteous? It's not because you don't wear jewelry. What are you living for your children? You have four children. You better build four houses. So that they will not be cursing your memory. I had a joke some time ago. I think I said this in one of my preaching. A boy was graduating. And during the graduation, during the convocation ceremony, different students, graduates, were receiving awards. Best in this, best in that. Huh? And the father will say, hmm, see children. See Peking. Ah, see correct child. After the program, they were going home. No car, no bicycle, no nothing. The sun was burning. Bentley passed. The boy said, see fathers. <laughs> Range Rover, hey, see correct father. <laughs> Don't say because you are single. It is when I get married. When you get married, life should be paying you royalty. This is the time to invest before kids start coming. When people go around begging for, for school fees, I help, but I'm thinking, this child gave you notice six years ago. Now one day, she will start kindergarten. This boy gave you notice 18 years ago, 15 years ago, that one day he will gain admission into the university. So why are you still begging? Why are you begging? 
mental laziness, is sickness, psychological laziness, low self esteem. Any little thing is it because you are better than I am? Don't marry that kind of a person. Any small thing, low self esteem. The person cannot stand other people's success. Must explain off. Oh, why, why, why now? Oh. Think twice before you marry that kind of a person. Physical laziness. Some people are so lazy, they are smelling. When I get to your kitchen, I can tell that you are a neat person. When I enter your car, you don't need to tell me any story. I can tell. When I get to your office and I look at your table, I can tell. There are people that they step out as if they are stepping out of a magazine. But go to their house. While they are making love to their wife or their husband is making love to them. Cockroach will be coming from under the bed. The blood of Jesus. It's not the blood of Jesus. It's what you are hiding under the Dirty, stinking, smelly. Visitors, guests come around. You must first run to the toilet to be sure it's okay before it's, you can come, sir. Laziness. Spiritual laziness. Ah, did we kill Jesus? I can't go. Bishop said there's another program. Can we pray? It takes the strength of the inside to carry the heavy responsibility of marriage. Marriage has responsibilities. There are a minimum of 14 different terms and winds that blow against each family. You can't afford to be sleeping and snoring. As a man, hear me, nature does not allow vacuum to linger. If you are not sound spiritually, your wife will take over. You can fast, you can pray, you can study, you can build your spiritual muscle. You are a babe, spiritually speaking. There are times that storms will come. The devil will come and check. Please, spiritual strength is important. Emotional laziness. As a single person, you must be mature in these areas of your life. Spiritual maturity. Emotional maturity. Every little thing, you cannot be crying. As a man, you cry, ha. Ah. Your wife is crying, ho. Oh. Your children are crying, where? Then you become a family of town criers. My husband says, a man is not somebody that runs with people. A man is somebody that people run to. Build your muscles. Emotional maturity. Your life cannot be tied to the aprons of your parents. Any little thing, you pick the phone. Hello, mommy, did you see what happened? You are still dating. How many will you report? Hello, hello. And you don't do that because by the time you forgive, your people will not forgive. Economic or financial maturity. You can be staying at your parents' place and tell me you want to get married. Brace up. Even if it's just one bedroom, one boy's quarters that is your own. Take your wife there. It's important. You should clap. Some people are angry, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> the next point, marry your friend. You have invested too much into your life. Your parents have invested too much. You cannot afford to marry your enemy. Every marriage goes through five major phases. The last phase of every marriage is what I call the gracious stage or the gracious phase. 
Each of you has conquered. Each of you has gone. Each of you is successful. And you come together. You know? You go, you come. At that stage, it is not sex that sustains the marriage. It is not love that sustains the marriage, that face. Because there are times in the marriage when you don't feel like loving. And there are times when you don't feel loved. It is friendship. Marry your friend. Who is a friend? Someone that knows where you stink and yet is faithful. Someone that is there when he has every reason not to be there. Someone that can tell you the truth that you hate to hear. Someone that you can lean on. Someone that can confront you. Someone that can tell you, look, the way you get angry is wrong. Someone that can tell you, the way your stomach is coming out is too much. And you will not be offended. You don't say, just leave me like that or leave me like that. There are people that, when they sleep, <sighs> and it's because of indiscipline. When last did you take a walk? My son and I used to live in Canada. 10 kilometers every morning. 10 kilometers in the cold. Even now in Nigeria, once in a while, I post it. Minimum, 5 kilometers. I don't want to be slimmer than this, but I'm too busy. My heart must pump. I must be healthy. So I walk. When you exercise, you have cut down cancer by 300%. 300 just by exercising you're not likely to have cancer 10 p.m you are still calling for bishop what is this food that i said i don't baku baku banku 10 p.m 11 p.m banku plus two bottles of malt And meat pie. Three donuts. While you are watching African magic. <laughs> ah. When some people get to heaven, the angels will say, We're not expecting you. <laughs> what killed you? His mouth. Anything you must eat, change, change, this one, that one. It's, 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 it's. So drink water is a problem. You need a minimum of eight bottles of this every day, minimum. When you eat, or you don't eat, please drink water. Because whether you like it or not, your liver is working. Your kidney is working. These things need water. Your brain is working. It needs water. When you are thirsty, it is a sign that radiator is dry. So don't wait till you are thirsty before you drink water. You don't need to drink like this. You'll be having big, big tummy. You sip it a little. Eat what you drink and drink what you eat. Some of you, when you put one spoon of rice in your mouth like this, it has gone. You must chew your food. Digestion starts from the mouth. That's why God gave you teeth. Chew. Minimum. When you put something in your mouth, minimum. You must chew it 14 times. Before you swallow. When some of you go to the toilet, he takes in Jamaica <laughs> to come and help you. 
Jesus! Because we call it Jesus! Jesus! God will say, there's no angel that can't go. Only my can. The ark angel. Water. Just drink. Put in your car. Put in your and stop drinking water that you put in your car yesterday because the sun has heated it up. Stop using, stop putting plastic inside the microwave. It causes cancer. Stop standing in front of the microwave when you are using it. Shift. The radiation is too much. You need to pay me. <laughs> as I'm speaking as a doctor. <laughs> physical laziness. Marry your friend. Singles. I want you to know that it doesn't matter. The people that are not enjoying their marriages around you. Marriage is sweet. I can testify that a good Christian marriage is a salary paid by God. Serve God with all your hearts. He will pay you your wages. If you think you're of age and you're not yet married, and the devil is whispering nonsense to you, you're not a spare tire. You're not a biological error. I told you yesterday, God comes late when he wants to come big. He's preparing your own boas. And in the name of Jesus, you will have a happy home.